All right, everybody, we're here. We're doing the WWE Cruiserweight Classic 2016 review. Good God <laughs> Almighty. Uh, starting off, Franklin, you were there for most of it, right? So... Uh, I was there. I was there for round one, and I got live reports from two and three. I had friends who sent me videos and everything. So tell uh, me the general feeling of who who did the arena love? Because I think a big thing is there's the full sale crowd who's very much like the internet wrestling community. Um, however, it's not always the case. Well, um, I'm gonna tell you this: Swan was straight up the number one most over guy the entire time which is odd. whether it's his theme song his charisma the crowd just loves rich swan which is odd because when you look at the internet um you don't really get that you don't really get much rich swan love um compared to you know saber jr obviously got this far and they lost to grand metalik which um a lot of people i didn't even know who grand metalik was uh, up until tonight, because I I'll tell you this, I couldn't remember he was. Uh, reactions improved. He did improve. I'll give him that. Mascara but, Dora. Yeah, Mascara Dora got um. I just completely butchered that, but yeah, um, I completely didn't know that they changed him around. But when I heard that tonight, I thought he was gonna win. Ha ha! No, your boy Chip H comes out. He's like, here's a title, and uh, you're gonna fight for the title, TJP dabs on him for the victory can't believe i just dabbed good thing you couldn't see me um but yeah tjp getting the win tonight um he tjp made, he made koto Ibushi tap out actually wait didn't he make all of his opponents tap out I'm trying to think uh i don't think he made the mac tap he did yeah make, i was gonna say one of did. them he didn't make tap but i think the rest of them he did he did he made the mac tap he made Gargano tap out. He made Rich Swan tap out. He made Ibushi tap out. And tonight, oh, there's so the submission out. artist takes it. Like he made Saber Junior tap out. Mm-hmm. Or no, it was not Saber no, no, Junior, no. was it? Ibushi, Ibushi, I mean, Ibushi. Ibushi. Yeah, Ibushi. Um, after after Swan, I'd say that Ibushi and Saber Junior were definitely the two most over. Let's let's roll back a little bit, okay? Um. Mm-hmm. Kota Ibushi beat Brian Kendrick in one of the most emotional matches, I would say, um, of this Cruiserweight series. Uh, you weren't there for that, were you? Uh, no. I was there, uh, I was there for, I want to say Ibushi versus, uh, Cedric. Mm -hmm. What's the overall, well, first off, how long were you there, by the way, the first round? Like, how many hours did you just sit down and watch Uh, wrestling? Four and a half was it worth it yeah. definitely yeah, yeah um what do you think the emotion is with uh, the brian kendrick story do you think they should just sign him i oh, mean hey they signed a bunch got, of these other he was guys getting mixed reactions he was getting mixed reactions when i was there because mm-hmm. he's like he was playing up to the heel character mm-hmm. uh raul mendoza the guy who faced him in the first round definitely got over mm-hmm. like you could tell by the ends by the beginning of the match Kendrick was more over because of his WWE history. By the mm-hmm. end, I'd say Mendoza was more over. Mendoza's definitely someone who they need to sign. Um, so let's talk about... Tonight was a two-hour event. Uh, we had the big Kota Ibushi, TJ Perkins match, um, which lasted about 15 minutes. Of course, Gary Metalik and Zack Sabre Jr. lasted about 15 minutes. Um, and then in the course of letting those guys have a quick break, um, we saw the team Do It Yourself, which is Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, take on Noam Dar and Cedric Alexander. Uh, both of those guys, Noam Dar and Cedric Alexander, they're going to Raw, right? Cedric, uh, yeah. Uh, Cedric Stop. is um, Dar is too, I believe. Yeah. Um, of course, do it yourself, Gargano and Ciampa. Um, they got the win tonight, right? Yeah. yeah. That was uh, a little, that was a little odd in my opinion, but um, because they're in NXT. You would think they would put over the main roster people going there, but there's that. So, well, Gargano and Champa are going to the main roster. I think they're doing both for the time being. Um, TJ, yeah, they're both going too. I think TJ Perkins. Do you think on the main roster he's going to be a face or a heel? Um, 
Main roster, I'd say, I'd say face. Main roster crowd's definitely yeah. a lot more forgiving than the NXT crowd. Yeah. Thing is, Perkins had a really shitty lineup of opponents when it comes to guys who were more over than him. He had to deal with Ibushi, Brian, and he had to deal Brian with um, um, Swan. Swan. Yeah, and Gargano. And Gargano. Yeah, um, Gargano had all this hype after winning the main event of the uh, of the last tapings. Yeah, against, so um, you put him against Ibushi or against Perkins. And all of a sudden, Perkins is kind of looking like not the not a hated guy, but not the most like guy in the ring. But if you look at it, you like put him a... against Swan, who was pretty much the most over guy, and they were booing him. You put him against Abushi after that, who was pretty much the favorite to win with Swan gone, at least mm-hmm. from the NXT crowd. And mm. you 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 were pretty much screwed. Let's like, look at it like this. You made also. sure that guy didn't get. Infected. Um, Grand Metalik, I wouldn't say is a hundred percent. The baby face also because he took on Zack Sabre Jr. I mean, Zack Sabre Jr. Do I need to say any more? He took on uh, Akira Tozawa, which is one of the more favorable people. Uh, Tajiri. Akira, Akira got booed. Tajiri. And... Akira had just gotten booed against Gallagher the taping before. So, yeah, because uh, a... coming off of Gallagher, Tozawa kind of, you know, got that. Um, so I kind of switched Metalik, but then facing Zack Sabre Jr., I think, switched him off. So th- the thing I really disagree with, I don't think there was a face or heel at all during the tournament because they flip-flopped so much. It was really just about wrestling, and I think that's what it should have been about. Um, and this tournament, Crusade Classic, has gone on for the better half of uh, roughly three months, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three uh, months. July. About that, yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, three well, months. No, because it was taped in June, right? Because I remember you telling me that. No, right? It was taped in July. I thought it was taped in early or mid mid June, but it was shown in July. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Never mind. Yeah, the first the first round tapings were. Yeah, so. Were in June. Because I remember you telling me that. You were like, hey, all the guys who you could predict went over, went over because, I mean, wrestling. Um,. So, yeah, there was that. It was basically uh, June, July, August, September, and then here tonight we had the semifinals and finals. So I think TJ Perkins was the right guy to win. Other people in the call wouldn't agree with it, but in all... Uh, I That was my pick. Let's let's give him that, overall... That was my pick from day one. He switched for me because I at first I was like Zack Sabre Jr., but as we got closer to them revealing that, Rob will have a cruiserweight division, and Zack Sabre Jr. was not signed. Um, that's when I started shifting away from Zack Sabre Jr., and I was like, all right, he's not signed, so let's let's push more towards guys that are signed. Um, and that's kind of when I was like, you know what, Perkins. My surprise was the whole Ibushi deal. Like, I thought... Ibushi was signed. I thought at the very least... Ibushi was considering signing at one point, but he just chose to keep it as one of his spots that he wants to wrestle in. He wants to make guest appearances. That's it. Yeah. So mm, that, that that was a bit odd to me. Like, I felt like Ibushi was the one guy that should have signed, and if he w- would have signed, he would have won. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna. Keep... Yeah, I feel like if he would have signed, he probably would have won. I'm not gonna keep y'all much longer, but let's give an overall review for. The entire Cruiserweight Classic. Um, actually, I think that's unfair. Let's give a review for tonight uh, of just tonight's wrestling. Because, I mean, if I if I did everything together, I'd give it a perfect 10. They did it perfectly, in my opinion. But let's do Well, tonight. yeah, there's no way you can't give it a perfect 10. That, yeah. It, it yeah. was a great Cruiserweight Classic. Um, so we had Triple H, you yeah, know, this, this, coming out. And he's like, here's a title. You're going to fight for a title now. And at that moment, I think it was... That extra Am I element. the only one that enjoyed the semifinal matches more than the final? I did enjoy the semifinal matches more than the final. Um, I'll tell you that. I did. I enjoyed it more than the final because one, I knew Perkins was going to win once the, that was the final. Because of the title. I, yeah, because of the title. I, I think, I think Perkins is way better to put that title on. In my opinion and i think it's, he's way better to start that division with the title there's people that will disagree but i'm gonna tell you something if they wanted to do anything with a guy with a mask sin cara kalisto what have they done with them yeah they would have done they would have done it already so point proven 
Anyways, well, um, and then again, there's I heard rumors of Neville and um Sin Cara being part of the of this cruiserweight division. They, they have to, in my opinion. They have to be a part of it. Um, what is nothing else against... for Neville to do? Especially Neville, because there's nothing else for him to do. I think Neville would be a good heel if he what was do you think are the against Perkins. That we see Neville versus Perkins. Highly, day one match. I think it should be a day one match. I think on day one we should see a Neville heel turn. Um, because I think it'd be interesting. I think, and I think it's it's well. The thing is, I Neville's a, Neville was a decent heel in NXT. Like exactly. when he was playing, yeah, he's, like I, I enjoyed his heel work in NXT. Yeah, so when uh, he was against Sammy, he was playing a good heel. Any other? But I um, feel like Perkins. Oh, I hope Sammy's not in the cruiserweight. I'm gonna say that right now. I hope he's not. He, he deserves more than the cruiserweight. So Sammy, Sammy's too much of a star for the cruiserweight. Yeah. Series. Um. Do 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 do. Any final thoughts you want to give it? I mean, I think overall, I'm going to say tonight Tonight was probably a good solid 10. Um, maybe take off a the point Smackdown, if you didn't the like... The SmackDown division, do you think that's going to happen? The rumored SmackDown counterpart? I just think that's, that's going to happen, but I don't think it should because I like the hardcore stuff in terms of the hardcore title. And I think it's... That's a whole other discussion, um, but I'm gonna get onto it anyways. Just- having having two titles that look exactly the same destroys the prestige. All right, as soon as they announced the universal title and it looked ugly, and then we had the world heavyweight title, which is just the black counterpart of it. It should be blue, especially because I think AJ would look much better in blue in that. Um, it destroyed the prestige on both of that, especially because they called it the world heavyweight title. Um, as soon as they called it the SmackDown Tag Team Titles, freaking ruined it. It's it went the dime and the penny belt, the women's SmackDown women's title even worse, in my opinion. Um, they all have good champions, but in my honest opinion, I think the Intercontinental Title and United States Title will overshadow and even cruiserweight will overshadow them um within the next six months if i think they Miz don't is turn right. i think around. the intercontinental title is the hottest title right now rusev i'm gonna i'm gonna be very lenient i think rusev if he plays his card rights rusev will be hotter than Miz. but i think Miz is the talk because he's just very on fire right now um in terms of he doesn't have anybody else to compete with for that title ripoff, all right? It's it's simply IC title, US title, cruiserweight. There is no SmackDown cruiserweight, which I really hope there isn't. There is no SmackDown European title or no Raw European title to, that looks exactly like the Intercontinental, I mean. So there's that. Um, any other final thoughts on the cruiserweight series? Before I, uh, get I really into do a hope they discussion. sign some of the more obscure guys. Uh, yeah, they need to sign some of them. Uh, I want to see really Brian Kendrick. I really do hope they sign some of the more obscure guys. Jason Lee, um, Mustafa Ali. Right, now Mendoza. we're getting a little crazy about who to hire. These are like first round eliminations. Um, I think Brian Kendrick. Yeah, but they were, they were all pretty impressive. Though. They were impressive, but I mean, there's a reason why there's independent circuit. Oh, no. um, Tajiri should be back, in my opinion. Um, and definitely we need to get brian kendrick so there's that anyways brian kendrick is part of the cruiserweight division yes what about drew gulak yes so we'll see you for i don't know if there's any more events coming up until raw in terms of wwe but we'll we see got you there TNA. oh well yeah WWE. not until wwe yeah so until then